Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about the difference between Peel's peregrines and uh, Anatom peregrines. Now, uh, before I jump in, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe to my channel, it very much helps me keep this up and going. If you're new to my channel, you will notice over and over and over again, I bring up my favorite falcon species, which is not a peregrine, it's the lanner falcon. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, lanner falcons captivated my attention. But I bring this up because even though that's my favorite, by no means do I declare it to be the greatest falcon for falconry. Uh, that's kind of a bold statement too because what's the greatest, right? Well, if I'm going to be going after flocks of starlings, a merlin's the best falcon in my opinion. It just depends on what your style of hunting. But I'm generalizing. Normally, um, I would say statistically, a large number of people who fly big falcons, big falcons being things like a jeer falcon, a saker falcon, a peregrine, prairie lantern, those kind of falcons, are usually training them to go off the fist, circle up above, wait on above you, then you flush up quarry and they dive down and knock them out of the sky. That's not an easy thing. There are many factors. What direction is the wind going? How cold is it? How fit is your bird? How hungry is your bird? How well trained is your bird? What is the quarry gonna do? Are they gonna flush and go right back into some brush? Or are they gonna go and be a tail chase? There's a lot of factors. So uh, at least in the United States, we usually don't think of big falcons of any kind as being a beginner's bird. It's like, learn the basics, the fundamentals of falconry. First, and then if you want to try big falcons, get a big falcon. Uh, and that used to be uh, based off of laws for most people. If you didn't have a lot of money, your first falcon, big falcon, was usually a prairie falcon because they were accessible. And so that made this wrong idea that prairie falcons were easier and then you move up to a peregrine. Not true at all. My opinion, based off of lots of experiences with many subspecies of peregrines, is that Peregrines are the easiest big falcon to train in traditional big falcon flights. But this is, this video is not just about peregrines. I want to talk about two subspecies. I've flown, uh, there's, uh, depending on taxonomists, I love taxonomy. I love Linnaean classification. It really helps me wrap my head around the natural world. However, taxonomy uh, can be viewed differently depending on scientists in different countries. Generally, right now, I believe we say that there are 19 subspecies of peregrine falcons. And uh, when I was younger, the barberry falcon was more considered a barberry peregrine, a subspecies of peregrine now, kind of its own thing. But uh, I'm in the United States, and we basically have three subspecies right now. There's the tundra peregrines from the extreme far north, usually small. Uh, when trapped, when migrating, extremely easy to train. We used to have, again, depending on how you classify things, an eastern subspecies of peregrine that is now extinct. Um, but then we have these two other peregrines. You have the anatom peregrine, which fills basically most of the United States. It's more of a western bird, but it fills kind of the United States. And then you have the Peel's peregrine of the Pacific Northwest. And these are the two I want to talk about. Whether from the wild or whether captive bred, these are both amazing birds. You're never going to go wrong flying a peregrine. Uh, well, I mean, okay, if you're like, I live in a dense hardwood forest with no open country, yeah, you're going to go wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're wanting to fly a big falcon, get a peregrine. If you've never done one before, that's the easiest falcon to train. You're going to have lots of success. They're loyal. Uh, but... That being said, I'm trying to compare the nuances and have you, let, hope you have an understanding of these two species, I, a subspecies of the same species. So the first one I want to mention is the anatom peregrine. The anatom is smaller. And again, remember, peregrines live all over the world in almost every country, and therefore you're going to get different subspecies of different size, different colorations. Um, the anatom is a good sized peregrine, but it's not huge. As a first year bird, they have shades of dark brown. Uh, that The melanin on the chest can be thicker or, or more sparse, just depending on the individual. But it's a, a brown to a dark, deep chocolate brown. And you know the, 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 the skin around the eyes, on the feet, on the sear is all pale. And then of course it gets yellow. There are some instances where first-year birds will will yellow up their feet earlier on, eh, where you can have first-year birds, first-year colors that shouldn't have the yellow yet that already have it. As an adult, the colorations are incredible. 
Uh, in my area, our adult anatoms get a lot of red on the chest. Beautiful red coloration, reddish orange, sort of rusty, either salmon pink or kind of a rusty orange. They have bars or stripes, uh, horizontal bars, horizontal stripes on the, the main part of their chest that compared to appeals are thin. Now there are individuals where they are thicker, but again, we don't consider them thick. They're fairly thin, fairly spaced out uh, bars. Their back as an adult usually is fairly blue. The very classic looking bluish colored. Um, it might not be bright, vibrant like some of the other peregrines, but it usually is a blue back on the adult and autumn peregrines. And uh, now they don't have to have red on the chest. Depending on your region, they might be white and have a little bit of red going down, a little bit of cream, but those bars are gonna be thinner. And they're not huge, they're just a good sized peregrine. Now, as far as flight, as far as temperament, an autumn peregrines are, in my opinion, the, well, let me phrase that, that's not true. Um, between these two, an autumn peregrines are the easiest, the most easy going, like, hey, let's go flying, I'm your buddy. Okay, you want me to go up? Okay, I'm watching, what are you doing? And particularly the male. Male and autumn peregrines are just such a joy to work with. They're easy, they're smart, they learn quickly, they're successful hunters. Uh, I've hunted all kinds of quarry with them, and they're just, uh, one of my favorites, Tiger, he would um, he was he was great because he would um, whether I was throwing up pigeons or whether we were hunting pheasants or ducks, he he would dive and he would chase and if he missed, then I you know rather than looking for him, I always knew what he would do. And if I could tell he was still flying, I'd just sit back and within five minutes he had gone back upwind and it circled up and it tripled his height and was waiting up above for me to flush something again. He's like, all right, I missed it, but we're gonna do this again. They get it. They're smart. And they're a joy to work with. The females are too, but the males even more so. And many falconers will say that among all the falcons, the male nautum is, is one of the absolute best. Uh, and i got to pause. I am working on a video of all the subspecies of peregrines in the world and all the subspecies of lanner falcons in the world as two separate videos. But I, those are partly finished because I'm still gathering photos and videos from other parts of the world where I don't live, which is kind of tricky. So I'm not necessarily comparing peels and anatoms to the other peregrines. I'm just talking about these two, okay? Now the peels peregrine is by far the largest species of peregrine in the world. And they are coastal. They live on the Pacific Northwest of the United States, Canada, and Alaska. Uh, they are very, very much, they, they hug the coast. They usually don't go inland from the ocean, uh, according to studies, more than eight miles. So they're very much hugging that coast and typically hunting uh, seabirds, which is good, good productive way of life. But they're massive, they're huge. Now all peregrines have big feet, but Peel's peregrines just have enormous, monstrously long toes to catch the diverse range of birds they're going after. A lot of peregrines will hunt tiny birds as is part of their diet. You know, larks and sparrows and things like that. The prey encountered by peels is usually large seabirds. And so having more size yourself, more musculature in the chest and longer toes makes sense. Now as a first year bird, the peels is usually almost black and across the board. Uh, with anatoms, there's a wide range of coloration both in first year birds and adults. With peels, they're really quite uniform and very dark, almost black, uh, including on the chest. The melanin dispersion on the chest is incredibly thick, very dark, and just beautiful, breathtaking, almost to the point that I wish that uh, they retain that color as an adult. As an adult, peels do not, some of them have a little bit of creaminess, but basically the, the, the lighter color on the chest is white, a gray or a white, and the bars uh, under on the chest and under the wings are very thick, incredibly thick, uh, reminiscent in many ways of the barring of old world goshawks, like a Finnish goshawk. They, they really do have extremely thick, well-defined bars that, that stand out quite a bit differently. Now between the two, Peels are, of all, uh, I think I've done five or six different peregrine subspecies that I've flown and, 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 and trained and hunted with uh, over the years. Peels are the most cantankerous, the most kind of grumpy. Uh, they, they're really prone to be sticky-footed, which if you've seen my videos, I explain what to do about that. But normally, 
that's an issue with hawks. These, even if they're not sticky footed when they're taking off, they're just prone to just kind of grip harder when they're just, just like these Velcro feet. Where most birds when they're perching are just kind of gentle if they're not trying to grab food, they're gentle. Peels just seem to kind of be like, all right, and they're that way towards their prey too. I consistently and routinely have hunted geese with my peregrines, with my peels peregrines. And you flush up a Canadian goose and they knock it out of the head, it falls to the ground, and then they get it and they're just gripping it and they're like, I got this. They are very aggressive hunters, very hard hitters, and they are a blast to fly. But the temperament is not what I consider to be a beginner's peregrine. Now, if you have no choice, you're like, I'm gonna do a first falcon and I have access to appeals. Do that, it's still a peregrine. But I'm saying if you have access to a Peels peregrine and an Autumn peregrine, a Tundra peregrine, a Cassini peregrine, and then don't choose the Peels if that's your first. Their temperament, they're, they're a little less forgiving, typically. They're a little more, you know, cantankerous and grouchy. But again, with the Falcon, if you're flying a Falcon in a traditional way, who cares? It's not like they're attacking your face. And most of the time, they have left your glove and are in the air. So they're very little time on the glove. I love them. I usually default to flying appeals and then say, well, geez, man, I wish I... <laughs> Not as nice as that in autumn I was flying a couple years ago. It's always like that. So different birds, different subspecies of the same species. Both are great. Uh, very different markings if you know what you're looking for. But uh, anatoms are just like your best friend. It's it, for me. It's the hunting falcon version of you know that that whole idea is you're driving in your old pickup truck and you got your your dog who's your best buddy and he goes everywhere with you. You're like, what are we doing? It's like that reliable. You can anticipate each other's moves so easily. Now every bird is an individual. Even from the same clutch of eggs, you could have this bird's a jerk. This bird's nice. This bird's prone to tail chase. So. I understand there are always exceptions, but I'm just trying to point out uh, trends as a biologist that we can look for. And, and in those trends, an autumn are usually easier to work with, train quicker, uh, and they're just kind of like your buddy, really easy to work with. And peels are more cantankerous, but are just the height of peregrine falconry for many people. And they're so big, their coloration is so defined that... Um, for a lot of people, it's kind of the, the pinnacle of peregrine flying. So um, that's just something to consider. I will do more in detail on the different subspecies and compare because uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about what actually is the best peregrine overall for a person to fly by people who have flown broader ranges of subspecies than me. But between these two, if you have a choice and you are new to falconry or new to peregrines and you're going to fly a first big falcon, I recommend the male and autumn peregrine. Between male and female and autumn, male and female peels, go with the male and autumn. You're going to have a great time and you'll love it. So this wasn't too in-depth, but hopefully it was interesting and uh, get you thinking more about falcons and, uh, and peregrines. Uh, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your experiences, whether they've been similar to mine or very different with peregrines. And as always, happy hawking.